Hi guys, how's it going? So, this is long awaited. I've been working very hard on this review. If you haven't checked the title out, or you're clicking this without, which would be kind of weird, we are reviewing my new camera, the Panasonic GH4. Specifically, this is the R variant. It's the slightly different version of the GH4 that they brought out for Europe only, which featured built-in vlog and unlimited recording time for those elsewhere in the world, specifically the US. I know you had to do an update to get the anamorphic, the vlog and all that stuff. Well, this camera, you could also do that to the GH4 that was already out in the UK and Europe, but you also have this variant, which is one I've got as in Europe, it replaced the original GH4. It's no different, except it does have one slight difference, which you won't be noticing because I'm using a lavalier microphone running into a wireless system which is plugged into the camera so this is also a nice little kind of test of the preamps from what I've heard so far it sounds pretty decent definitely better than my previous camera the Nikon D5100 which I do actually have here the preamps in this camera weren't great it, I would use it for scratch audio only however I would be happy as I am right now to use the GH4s preamps and mic input for production stuff on small stuff like this on reviews on talking head stuff i wouldn't mind it's always always better to go to an audio recorder but sometimes you don't always have that option so during this review we're going to be looking at a lot of different little tests i've got basically i've compiled loads of footage over the past three months since i got the camera and I'm going to kind of just talk about the camera now and fit that in where appropriate. I know what I've shot, so I'm going to try and steer the review through that footage. However, I'm generally just going to talk about my thoughts and impressions on the camera and kind of cut a lot of it over the top because a lot of it's kind of B-rolly stuff. And when there is specific tests, um, some of them I already do have talking in, so obviously I'll shut up for those. And for other tests, I will make note of those as well of course. So, what are my thoughts on the Panasonic GH4? If you've seen my Twitter, you probably will have seen a couple of little sneak previews talking about it. If you look at my Instagram, all of which are linked down below and probably will be linked around the screen at the moment. This camera's phenomenal. I love this camera and I'm not just saying that because I own it. Uh, if there was serious issues with it and any, and I will note any issues I've found with it during this review, it, you know, no camera's perfect. This one, definitely, it's not perfect. But for what you get for your money, it's phenomenal. This camera, now the GH5 has come out, is cheaper, but when I got this, with the lens, was one would have been £1,300. So, basically, a grand and a bit cheaper than the Sony A7S Mark II and A7S, um, and that's a couple hundred cheaper than the A7Rs. The closest competitor that I can see in the similar price range that achieves, you know, the 4K video, all this kind of stuff, at time of release, 
I don't release or before pre GH five and pre some of the cameras that have been coming out over the past couple of months. Um the closest thing that probably would have been out, which definitely has been compared to this in the past, is uh the Samsung NEX camera. It was a DSLR that actually did 4K video. It was actually I think the first DSLR like mirrored camera that actually had I think it was mirror I'm fairly certain it had a mirror. I remember hearing it had a mirror. I didn't really look into it a lot because the image out of it wasn't really there and I definitely much prefer the GH4. I've been wanting this camera, honestly, pretty much since its release back in 2015. Um, I've wanted this camera for video pretty much since starting doing video production to in various extents. So, you know, it's a all around excellent camera, the 4K video, which you aren't technically seeing at the moment, as you can tell by this crop in, um, and by the little thing in the uh, quality section down below. This is uploaded in 1080p because it's such a huge review, I did not want that upload time. Render times, honestly, aren't too bad at 4K, they're kind of one-to-one, -one, maybe a little bit over that, so, you know, a minute of 4K rendering roughly takes my computer a minute, give or take, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, it really does depend on what you're kind of doing with the footage and all that kind of stuff. But the upload times, you know, the UK, we have pretty decent download speeds on broadband, but the upload speeds in homes at least usually aren't great. I think we get about six up, which isn't bad. Like, it could be a hell of a lot worse, but it's not ideal for trying to upload a 30 plus minute 4K review of a camera. So, 4K obviously does have its uses outside of just native 4K. As you can see in this review, as I've done a few times, as you'll see in some of the footage over the past few videos that have been coming out over the past three months, four months since I got this camera, um, you can crop in. Please do excuse my cold, by the way. I have no idea how I've still got a cold when it's been 15 plus degrees for most of the past week, but okay. Um, you know, I can crop in, you have four times the resolution, so I can go from this nice wide 14 mil, but I'm shooting in 4K, so 2.3 crop, basically roughly a 35 mil frame in full frame terms, but 14 mil on this lens, and now I can go like this, and I've got a nice tight shot, which probably would be around about a 25 mil equivalent, like I do actually own, which I'm gonna come on to in a moment. So the image is great, 4K is awesome. I'm shooting this in log, in vlog. Um, we're gonna obviously look over some of the footage here at the moment. Did a test with log um, in a few different situations and it definitely has its place. It's a really, really useful tool to have. But Cine D is also probably my other favorite profile. Those two for video are the ones I will be using pretty much all the time, depending on the shooting situation. When I have a lot of light like I do at the moment or a moderately contrasty scenario, then log is great. If you have a lot of contrast, a lot of light, if you have all this kind of stuff, it's great. But it's not particularly brilliant for shooting in the dark. If I'm in a dark environment, if I was inside without access to this amount of light and some daylight coming through a window that's behind the camera then I would definitely be shooting this in Cine D because it is you shoot in a completely different way for log I'm overexposing this shot so that I don't lose detail here I'm in the shadows whereas if I was shooting Cine D I'd be going the opposite in Cine D it's like a normal kind of profile it's not logarithmic like log is obviously and the way you shoot with normal profiles is you want to underexposed because you want to try and preserve that highlight detail where log it's much easier to get that highlight detail back so I can bring up the stuff and try and preserve detail in the shadows. Um, a lot of this stuff we'll be covering in some rather interesting and hopefully really informative videos that are coming this summer on the channel so stay tuned for that.
up next, uh, Pascal profiles in 4K. Generally just the image as a whole is stunning. Uh, the 96 frames per second in 1080 at overcrank is gorgeous. Uh, here's some shots I've got of that, of course. It's really wonderful having some decent slow-mo. The only slow-mo I've had to this point is on my phone, which is 720p, 120 frames a second, which isn't bad, but on your phone you can't zoom in, you zoom in at 720p, you're just losing so much detail. This I can stick lenses on, I can zoom, I can get nice solid full HD, gradable V-log if I wanted to, slow-mo, which is nice. Of course the GH5 now has that at 180, which would be awesome, but you know, this, I got this before that came out, which isn't an issue. This is still a great camera for those who own a GH4 right now. If you're wanting to upgrade to a GH5, I wouldn't say don't. However, only do so if some of its features are necessary to your workflow. It really isn't going to produce significantly better stuff. It's not going to handle much differently. If you need the hyper slow mo, then yeah, fair enough. If you need the 10 bit, which is debatable, yeah, 10 bit is great. Um, I have shot some stuff in 10 bit in the past on other cameras. It's great. The color grading room that you have is definitely useful. However, how often do you need it is debatable. Um, the high bit rate is definitely good, you know, getting that more data rate through, yeah, you go through cards quicker, but it's great. Dual SD card slots is the only super enticing thing to me about the GH5, because having the ability to either record redundantly and have it go to both, but yeah. The GH4, if that's a camera you've just bought, you've just got like I have, or if it's a camera that you found a good deal on and you debate whether to get that or save and get a GH5, Honestly, if there isn't anything that the GH5 does compared to the GH4 that you specifically need, the GH4 is a wonderful camera. The image out of it's gorgeous, the, you know, 4K, it still does high bitrate at uh, 1080 if you want that 200 megabits per second. It's got log, it's got unlimited recording times now if you get the GH4R, and it's got such a usable body it's like I can go into the menus and the menus are simple they're not like Sony's menus I've tried Sony S A Alpha series cameras before and the menus are a mess this the menus are easy to navigate you can navigate with your finger because it's got a full touch screen on like I think it's in a lot of the Nikon bodies that are coming out now they're only partial touch screens and all this kind of stuff you know this camera costs almost a fifth of Canon's flagship 1DX Mark II, which my uncle owns, and honestly, in a lot of areas, this keeps up or beats it, in my opinion at least. It's, you know, it's got the 4K codec that it uses is better, it shoots DCI 4K, and what I have seen is a better codec. The 4K photo, yeah, so does one, the 1DX has that. The 1DX also weighs a damn ton, it's a huge camera and you need huge lenses for. I'm using a 14 to 140mm kit lens at the moment. Um, and that gives me, when shooting in 4K with the crop, essentially a 35-ish to 300 on mil lens equivalent in a lens that's this big. It's tiny, I was showing Joe, uh, obviously you've seen before on the channel, I was showed that to Joe the other day and he was just blown away by how small these lenses are. Let's take a look at how small 25 mil primers you know it's absolutely tiny and the size of it definitely makes it so so much more fun to use you know I currently have it all rigged out as you might have seen on my Instagram or I'm going to put that photo here um, but you can also go small and compact and handheld with it and it just it's such a usable system and you know you can get some bigger lenses for it and you can get some awesome stuff like the Vedra Mini Primes that I'm definitely going to be investing in a few years time those uh, Vedra Cine Primes they're cinema primes designed specifically for micro four thirds and I think that like, everything I've seen from those is just awesome they design the small cinema primes whereas normally like these huge great things but the tiny little things 
they can just fit, like they're bigger than the kit lens and that lens, but the, in relative terms are tiny. It's just such a mobile system. You know, you can have all this rig stuff and kit it out and have it in a big bag, or if you want to go traveling, you can crush it all down into a small little bag as well, which it's just such a versatile system. You know, it's a DSLR size and styled camera, but it's still not huge. It's definitely no, it isn't significantly different in size to my Nikon D5100 here. You know, I've put them side by side and it isn't significantly different. It's slightly different shape, so it's different size in that sense. But, you know, in physical size as in taking up space in bags and stuff, you know, it's similar to a mid slash entry range DSLR and that just makes it so powerful and so portable that you can pretty much do anything with this system. Come on, by the way. Right, you can do the honours. Start off. I might need to get Ooh, it has instant moisture pump technology. You're welcome. Whatever that means. <laughs> Lord knows. Right, I'm gonna stick it on my What was I about to I'm... do? <laughs> oh my god, where is my baby powder gone? Essential. That's what I used to bake. Because I'm a cheap hoe. Oh, I can't find it! Oh well. No one needs to bake. Everyone needs to bake. And the jam my eyes. I'll, I'll put it up a more. I think it's just that. <laughs> you look uncomfortable already. I'm fine. He's loving his life. Where's the idea to even do makeup to test a camera come from? I can't actually remember specifically why makeup, but because... because he's curious. Are you confused about your gender? I'm not, no. I won't assume your gender. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hate myself. That was karma. <laughs> no, it's Am I more... even frame? Most of you. Hello. Oh my god. But basically, because this is a new camera and just wanted to push it in. Oh well. Just wanted to see what it does. Okay. What do you mean what it does? <laughs> oh! Oh no! Oh, just blend it in, blend it in. <laughs> blend it in. Blending fixes everything. It does, are you kidding? Right. Do what? <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna fit, it's okay. <laughs> Really hit things by my eyes. Right, just like this way. Um, just... Can we do your eye oh, makeup then? Jesus. No, yeah. it's the bottom of his eyes he doesn't like. It's like we went to see Rocky Horror. Oh, the best! I took him, it was me. I was the influence. And she went to put, like, it was just eyeliner, wasn't it? So yeah, eyeliner, I, and I cried it all off in like five minutes. And no, it was before I'd finished. I just went, right, well, I'm just going to smudge that in and smudge some under the other eye because it's not. You're not, you're not going to be rocking eyeliner, sweet pea. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> he actually does. <laughs> Highlights are my favourite part. Oh, I'm so excited. I love highlighter. I have 54 minutes of 4K footage. Oh, that's going to be so fun. So pretty. Do you want to kiss me on the cheek? Oh, While it's still wet. Yeah, really do it. Cause oh. That's my favourite thing to do. I know, because he likes it when I do it because it makes a good imprint. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Has it made a good imprint? It has. Are you proud now? Yeah. I think like I the size of your guys' <coughs> faces is like... There we go. <laughs> Sorry, my heart like does hit you in the head. It's okay. This is really weird. Is it in focus? It will be in a moment. Thumbnail. <laughs> it actually that is. is. That is a thumbnail. Wait, let's do. Wait, let's do like cousin pose for thumbnail. You have to send me all the. I will. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm that rather bizarre now. That's like, just kind of close. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, it looks so pretty. Um, I, can I just say I'm quite proud of our handiwork. Like, we did, I'm honestly not, but I'm not no, proud of I my mean, handiwork. Like, <laughs> like, I did one eye, you did the other eye, but it like, it kind of matches. If- Will like, it focus on me? Please focus. If it was, if, if it was a dark room. It's continuous, there we go, now it's focused on me. 
If it okay, was a dark room really... and really far away, you wouldn't tell. I don't know if that is in focus, you know. It is. Of course, a big thing of this is it's mirrorless, so how is the autofocus? And I have two answers to that. In video, as you can see here, it is certainly okay. I, it could be worse. I actually had to end up manually focusing a lot of these shots of these birds here. However, in photos, as you can see by these stills, uh, it's very quick. It's shockingly quick. I've never found an issue, in, even into relatively dark conditions, with the autofocus in stills mode when it's snappy. In video mode, it's definitely a bit slower. That's designed that way to get smoother focus, so it looks like someone's pulling focus. I think that's a good feature. No, I'm manually focusing this because I'm only at f3.5 on this lens. My depth field isn't too bad. I can move forward and back a little bit and stay in focus, but. The continuous isn't bad, like the GH5 is getting slated as this got slated, but it's a contrast AF. It isn't design, it's not face detect. People are saying, oh, but Canon are doing this and Sony's doing this, and I'm like, these cameras cost a hell of a lot more money and they're using significantly more advanced focusing systems. And considering how snappy and quick and accurate the focus for a contrast detect autofocus is on these mirrorless cameras, you can't really complain. It's contrast based. You know, I've seen people shooting in flat profiles with very little contrast between them and a the background and saying, oh, why is it not locking on? Because there isn't much contrast. Yeah, I know we don't always get that option, but from what I've seen, shooting in something like Cine D, which is certainly still fairly flat and colour gradable, but nowhere near as flat as this log, the autofocus is a little bit snappier in video, it holds on a little bit better because there's more contrast there. To the camera, there isn't much contrast. At all. When you have this flat image, I've noticed there is a bit of a difference. But overall, the, the focusing is great. It's, in stills mode, it's way quicker than my DSLR was. It's instant. I've never seen it miss a beat. At all. And in video, you know, it could be worse. Like, honestly, it could be a lot worse. It's not that razor fast, but you don't always want razor fast in video. You don't want to be recording and it just goes... Ch on focus, you want it to be, you know, focused smoothly, like some point focus. And I want to say, money focusing on this system with the Panasonic lenses, fly by wire, it's definitely not as good as a true manual, proper manual focus where you're moving it. Um, to counter this, what I am going to be investing in for my kind of pro level lenses that I want. It's going to be the 12 to 40, 41 50, and 7 to 14 mil 2.8 lenses from Olympus because these, while are, they are fly by wire focusing systems, when you're manually, manually focusing, they have hard stops at the end with measurements telling you where it's focusing on. So while it is fly by wire, it isn't impacted by speed or it, and it does have locks. So repeatable focusing is definitely a lot easier on those lenses. Plus they're sharp as hell and at 2.8 they're nice and quick. So. Those are definitely lenses that I would probably recommend if you're doing video with micro four thirds over Panasonic's lenses because you know you want that repeatable focus, which is definitely difficult with this fly by wire system. It's definitely not impossible if you practice with it, but it's certainly not as easy as it is with proper markings and hard stops and repeatable focus rings. So there is that.
Speaking of the 25mm Prime, this is some footage that I shot with uh, my girlfriend. Just as a test, because I did get this later, I got this around my birthday, whereas I got the camera around Christmas. So I only got this lens a couple of weeks back. It's a phenomenal little lenser. It is sharp as hell. It's got a nice depth of field. You know, iPhone plays some distance and fast. I can shoot in way darker situations now. If I was shooting without lights today, I would definitely be shooting with that lens because that f1.7 really does bring this up and it'd be a, a lot more visible. But overall, you know, it's a double little lens. And if I'm going to having a proper little play with it and testing it out, and the 14 to 140 that comes with it, which is what most of this review is shot on, and all this talking head stuff is shot on. For a kit lens, it's phenomenal, it's sharp, it's as quick as most other kit lenses, 3.5 to 5.6, it's it's still pretty quick, It's it could be worse, you know, 3.5 is still pretty decent, certainly not super quick, but it's half a stop quicker than f4 roughly, so it, you know, there's certainly slower lenses out there. Okay, so actually I think this is going to wrap it up here. Conclusion time, I've showed you quite a bit. I hope you enjoyed the makeup thing that went out separately, but it was quite a fun video to make. You know, there's been quite a few tests I've managed to do with the camera that kind of just prove just how good it is. You know, it's produces gorgeous footage, it's easy to use, the menu system's great, the touchscreen's great, you know, be able to touch autofocus, all the features that make Micro Four Thirds systems excellent are in this. This is definitely one of the best Micro Four Thirds, if not the best bar, maybe OMD and you know, the new GH5 and the OMD um, EM1 Mark II. You know, those two cameras are probably better now, but considering when I got this, this is definitely the top end of what Micro Four Thirds is capable of. And it's a phenomenal system. I would recommend it to absolutely anybody. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making it. I'm looking forward to really putting this camera to use now. And you're going to see lots more stuff from it in the future. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Adios.